It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Ladies and gentlemen, late but never late for dinner, I should say, right? Welcome to another edition, ladies and gentlemen, to Rolling the Bones Around the Cage with Grizzly and Gumshoe Val. What's going on, rock and roll man? I can't hear a liquor word you're saying there, so we got to, yeah. 82 degrees, Detroit. There we go. Cloudy. Not yet. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Witch, welcome. Hello there, Stanny Stones. Jeremiah Sutton. What's happening, brother? Yeah. So, what a weekend, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, nice to see everybody in here. Crazy Witch. Nagel Porto, welcome to the show. And my co host just disappeared. Ah, wonderful. It's going to be one of these shows, I can tell. What's up, Chris? Hello, Luna. Yes. How's everybody doing over there? Dolls have been attacking me, which I have no idea why, but you know what? God love them. But it has been interesting. Very interesting. Woohoo! That's right. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. He is back. I am back. All right. So what's been going on with you, kind sir? Well, you know, it's summertime and everything is summertime. We got flowers to plant, grass to cut, honey does this and honey does that. So it's been very, very busy with the grandkids, with family. Right now I've got three dogs in my house, so I'm hoping I don't hear a, a kerfuffle going on upstairs here. Wow, now it's, it's uh, everybody's out of town now for uh, for the holiday. Oh, so, party over at Val's. That's it. That's it. Man. What have you been doing, Gris? Oh, do man, I day? have been, you know, working on my shows, adding more shows, doing this, doing that, adding I, more I, psychics, talking to reporters. I swear, you, you know, you, so. you never rest. I don't know how uh, you do it. So they're like, uh, you know, that well, I had a couple people who were like, you are still up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still working on shows and advertisements and everything. So, yes, I do stay busy, ladies and gentlemen, but I enjoy it, right? You know, so uh, I did tell you about my uh, Sasquatch sighting, right, over at Sonia's house. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is crazy. You know, and it was funny. I was talking to her today, and she was like, do you hear that? She's upset because I did not give her any eggs. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I'm not going to say anything, but you know how I feel about gifting, ladies and gentlemen. But, yes. And that goes for hard work. Now, she does. Now, she claims she makes some good pickled eggs. Now, I will have to be a judge of that because I love pickled eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love pickled eggs. So. Ain't that right, Eric? Just join Simply Spooky Network, too. All right, Eric. Welcome to the show, brother. Crazy Witch is laughing. Yeah, you know, it's never don't moment with her, but yeah. But now what's going on with you, though? Not not a whole lot. Um, A lot of people, a lot of people that I know, they're out of town. They're booked up for the um, for the uh, conferences and stuff. And, you know, I was thinking about the conferences. I was thinking about thinking about uh, uh, going on hikes and stuff. But with this and I and I know around Michigan and stuff, I've been in in government areas, you know, state owned uh, state owned parks and federal parks. There are large areas that have defoilant in the uh, in the weeds and stuff. And what I mean by that is there's large areas that are dead and dried grass, which tells me uh, something's going on with the weeds. Something's killing the killing the weeds, the debris and the foliage and stuff. And I don't want to be stepping through that stuff. 
if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean, right? Mm -hmm. So they are doing things out there in public and across this land. I'm not being a Slim Jim. Mm -hmm. It ain't a Squatch Stick, but it's a Slim Jim, so I'm going to snack on it here and there. But anyways, I had to throw that in there. But uh, no, I do understand that and agree. And I was talking to a lady. Uh, she was on one of our shows called Open Door with Brenda Hartman. And uh, her name is also Barb. And that's the shoot girl, the one that uh, had the Bigfoot, the cloak. And let me tell you something, uh, ladies and gentlemen, she has got this clan that lives on her property and she has stories. And she invites people out that are believers and non-believers to come out and camp on her big, large property. <laughs> and it's never a dull moment. I can assure you that. And um, so I asked her, you know, and we were talking and I was like, so what do y'all do when y'all go camping? And I was like, boy, what is the first rule of thumb when you are an attorney? Never ask a question that you don't know the answer to. So I was sweating bullets. I'm like, oh, my God, I mean, something bad's going to happen. She's like, we play music. So I'm thinking, all right. She's like, I, I, I told her, so I got this brand new big June box, you know, that call blast. And she's like, no. She's like, you get drums and just start drumming and do musical instruments and they will come to you. And that caught my attention. And she said that one guy had a stick and he was, you know, didn't have an instrument. So he had his big stick and he was beating it on the cooler. And during the beat, he would go clunk. And then after a couple of minutes, it went clunk, 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 clunk. They were actually participating with the music. Hmm. Now, is that not ludicrous? That's crazy. Yeah, that's what I said. I said more than that. that so guess is... what I've been looking at online? I've been looking at kind of like little drums that you buy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not expensive. You get them from 8, 10, 12 inches. They're all under 20 bucks. You get a set of two or a set of three. And it comes with little mallets. It's like the Indian drums. You sit around, hey, oh, and, you know, and hand them next to the fire. And so, yeah, uh, snap into a Slim Jim. That is correct, Eric. Yeah. You know, you know, in, in, in a lot of reports that I research and stuff where instruments are involved, um, a lot of times people seem to get uh, responses with flutes, you know, wind instruments. She said uh, that. She said flutes. Yes. Uh, string instruments such as guitars or, or violins. Um, but those are the two instruments. Now, I've heard about the percussion, the drums, um, insofar as uh, people hearing uh, uh, drum beats, such as what people would expect uh, from Indian drum beats, you know, Native American drum beats and stuff. Uh, I heard that also, but then I I also I also see where um, uh, visitations are involved with that. So you know, uh, is there a connection between the two? Between all those, probably, for sure. You know, um, so those are some things to to toy around with. Those are some things to talk with talk about. So. Well, I've got some theories. Now, I've got four cell phones, a couple of iPods, and whatever else you want to call it, and technology and iPads, whatnot. So with this call blaster, I thought about taking this call blaster, big speaker. I mean, it's, it's a good size. Got LED lights on it and stuff to get, get your attention because, you know, they evidently like lights. Have you heard that about cat balls and stuff? Now, do you know what a cat ball is? I, I think you have one, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. They, I, they actually, the damn things, the dolls turned it off the other night. I couldn't figure out why during the show it wouldn't light up. So after the show, I picked it up and shook the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that damn thing went worth it. And I hit the switch and it came on. I was like, oh. I was like, dolls, not come on. <laughs> so, George, anyways, 
uh, Grizz, didn't George Norrie have a show or Art Bell have a show on about dolls, haunted dolls or something? Yes, we're you actually going to do a show on haunted dolls, I am. Those with FDL people. Paranormal, are you okay? So, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, these crazy folks are going to have people send them items. Oh, no, not me. Uh, <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. I'm good. Are you but, uh, are you an antique collector or anything? Do you collect any stuff like yes. that? Yes. And I do believe in haunted vessels. That is correct. I sure I do. I hear a disturbance upstairs. Eh, it never fails. That's all right. You know, uh, no big deal. As long as I don't hear any growling out there, I guess I'll be okay. Uh, for the audience, I, I've got uh, I'm babysitting three dogs. My dog and, and my daughter's two dogs, German Shepherd and a, and a Mutt. They're all, basically these dogs are all adopted dogs. So they were taken uh, to, give a, to be given a, a better home and stuff like that. And I believe in that. I really believe in that. I do too. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you think about antique stuff, I don't know, Grizz. I, I, I'm a little, I'm a little dubious about that because I believe just the stuff that that I've read, the stuff that I've experienced over the course of my life, um, people, people place imprints on on different items. Something could be, say, a telephone, for instance. An old, I that used to have an correct. old telephone. And if that's been around a, a house, a family where something has gone on, that maybe not, may, maybe it wasn't so good. Um, I don't want that. I don't want that energy in my house. I don't want it in my house. So, uh, you know, I don't want ownership of, of, of that item. It's not important to me. Now, you all will laugh because usually when I go antique shopping, I take EMF detectors, holy water, and crucifixes. Mm -hmm. And you see people's faces in these antique stores. They're like, what the hell is he doing over there? I'm testing things out before I take it home. I mean, and really, plus, you're supposed to buy, yes, suppose you're, and you're supposed to tell whatever it is that you think, hey, you are not allowed to follow me home. Mm -hmm. Then I have a couple of prayers in my prayer book that I say because they taught us what to say, and it relieves whatever is attached to it. Now, I'm not saying it's 100%. Sometimes it may take two or three times or weeks, whatever, but you have to do a couple of things. So when you do purchase something, you have less of a fear of something being attached to it coming home with you. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Now, the Chucky story, Jeremiah Sutton. Woo! My oldest daughter, she hates me because she still has nightmares about Chucky. Uh, she did when she grew up. I didn't think it was that bad, bad of a deal, Chucky. But anyways, uh, yes, yeah, some spiritual attachments. So yeah, we're actually doing a show on that. So mm -hmm. my thing about this call blaster, I figure I'll take one of my cell phones because it's Bluetooth and put it 150 acres away. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to, to define an acre, there's 43,560 square feet in one acre. So you times that by 150, that tells you the square footage of this land. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a whole lot more than that. Then I thought on the other side, I will be banging on some drones. So this way I'll have the flutes, the Indians, and the, and the tribal music playing full blast and me doing my thing on the other side. Now, what will call in or what will make the local newspaper? <laughs> I have no idea. So I just feel sorry for any raccoon hunters out in the woods at night. So, yes, it's going to be interesting. So how many feet are in a, an acre, did you say? 43,560 square feet. Wow. One acre. Um, so so in a mile, I'm just I'm just thinking... Just uh -huh. to put that in perspective, a mile is 5,280 feet, I think. Yes, that is correct. And and to to think that an acre is beyond that, it's... Yeah. And if somebody so people has, don't realize that. Yeah. People, uh, I mean, for five acres, 10 acres, that's quite a distance. But we're talking about square. We're talking about... That is square, correct. Right? We're not square. talking a straight line. We're talking yeah. square, you know, a foot by foot. Yeah. Yes. 
within that's a still a lot of that's still a lot of ground now. It is because if lot. you take twenty eight hundred acres, that's that's a lot of property. So, I got twenty feet between my house and the neighbor's house. Talk about an acre. This is the way it is living in the city, my friend. I could brush my teeth in the bathroom and wave at my neighbor in the living room. That's the way it is living in the city. That is the city life. We see at my old house, uh, we bought a house as a new development. And I told the builder, I'm like, look, I don't want nobody to build next door. I want to buy that lot. And he says, why do you want to build a lot for? I'm like, uh, I got to think quick. I said, I'm going to put in another garage on there and uh, a three and a half car garage. And hell, I didn't want it for nothing. I just wanted to extend the yard and whatnot. So I did all the paperwork, went to the closing and everything, and we closed on it. And then I got a, a letter and a call from the attorney. They're like, hey, we have to refund you the money. I'm like, what for? Well, the grandson filed bankruptcy on the grandfather behind his back and used the property as collateral and didn't tell nobody. And I'm like, wait a minute. Isn't that why you do the title insurance mm -hmm. and the title check? Mm-hmm. So That's now that insurance that I paid for should pay that off, and I should still have acquired that property. Now, it, it never did happen. So That's thank God when I got out of law enforcement and went to the civilian world, the company I worked for, they sold my house and transferred me uh, because I was the same thing. I can actually put a broomstick almost damn near between house to house, and that drove me nuts. No, and right. they had a hot tub on the back. They had to put a, uh, and I had a big deck. My deck was like, I don't know, uh, 45 foot long by 15 and a half foot. No, it was 16 foot wide because they made it by the length of the boards. And it was really nice. And it ran to the whole length of the house, the second story of the house. And I told my daughter, if you ever snuck out, I'm going to know about it. But anyway, then she never did do it. So, but, uh, but yeah, but they had a spa and, you know, nothing like sitting on the back porch and having family and friends over and be like, uh, let's see how we can block that area right off. So mm -hmm. thank God we didn't live there long. Yes. So, you know, I wonder about the real estate laws, um, insofar as Bigfoot's and, uh, spirits in the houses well they changed it in kentucky most you things. used to had to tell them yeah now it's uh, -uh. You know, whatever goes goes yeah yes yeah. yes um that it's called a stigmata is that what they call that now in real estate that is correct let me let me fact check myself self here but uh i think it's called that's well it tells you how long it's been since i've been in real estate uh, term for murder house, but there is an actual term, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the home versus association. Okay, do you have to disclose a death in the house or a suicide or a murder? Hold on, I'm bringing it up right now. Uh, most sellers know they're obligated to, to disclose physical defects, like a faulty foundation, mold and state. Well, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what about disclosing of a death or anything else? And can you be sued for it? And, uh, it says, what about disclosing a valid death? Uh, it doesn't say anything. A lead based paint, which most of the time we don't have to worry about anymore because the homes are newer. And plus, mm -hmm. how many layers of paint around the home? But they still have to give you the best. So no, it does not give you an answer. So, yeah, well, that's I'll what I thought. You, I'll tell you when I bought um, bought a um, uh, a home in a uh, condo to flip it. To, you know, to, <gasps> as investment. I know why. You know why they quit doing it. Why? You're not going to believe this, ladies and gentlemen. There are companies out there just like Carfax. I'm not joking. I'm going to post this. <laughs> this is not funny. I just post this out here for everybody to look at. There are companies out here 
that will do the background check to see if there's any stigmatas in that home. <clears throat> and they charge you for it. That's why you don't have to disclose it no more. Look at it. Diedinhouse.com. It's a, what do they call it, Chris? Diedinhouse.com. Yeah. That's one uh, of them. And there's many of them that came up. That's exactly what I did before I bought these properties. I, I did oh, the floor on these places. But in that last uh, property that I bought, um, the information didn't come back. It was hidden. And it was hidden, I believe, because somebody prominent used to own that property. And um, it was all about selling the property. Well, what I found out was later was that somebody, you know, somebody uh, died in the house. It's, you know, I mean, that happens all the time. But, you know, people started telling me, you know, people were renting the house before I had it up for sale. People were renting the house and, and they were telling me they, they heard somebody walking down the, the hallway. They seen this. They heard that. I never seen anything. <clears throat> I went through the house before I bought it. I didn't re I didn't <clears throat> I didn't find anything <clears throat> unusual about the house. Uh, through official means, through investigation, background investigation on the house. Calls the say, service. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything that stuck out with me. You know what I do? I What's go knock on neighbors' doors. And that's exactly what I did. Because lover, lovers. It, neighbors it love match. to talk. It didn't match what I was seeing on the house and stuff. Uh-huh. But, but then I found out what had happened. And uh, probably, you know, in, in those cases like that, in, in the residents that I've that I'm familiar with, where um, there's been a murder or something like a suicide, uh, you know, I'll pass on that. No matter what kind of deal it is, I'll pass. No, thank you. I'm, I'm not interested in that. But what I do do uh, whenever I'm whenever I bought a, a new piece of property um, after doing all this, and this is called due diligence. I do have a uh, pastor or somebody come in and um, cleanse the house. And then the second order of business is changing all the locks on the doors. What I, and I learned by experience. Wow, you better believe that. Yeah. One, of the, one of the houses that I used to own, um, I didn't do that. And one day my, my, myself and my two young daughters were there in the house, just leisurely watching television. They were watching television. I was laying on a couch. And some stranger walks in the in the front door. I mean, the door was locked. He walked in. He had his keys and he walked in the house. And I got up and stopped him at the door and backed him out of the front door. Who are you? And who are you? This went on for a couple seconds. I would have dropped I'm, his ass. I'm the owner here. What are you doing walking into my house? Well, Fufu used to live here, you know. Well, Fufu doesn't live here anymore. I live here. This is my house. You can't come in here like this. Don't walk in here again. Like that's immediately, that's one of the learning moments in life. So that's the first order of business that goes on. You have no idea how many people live and leave a house before you buy it like that. So that you have You're right. That's you know, important. and I'll and tell you a story and I'm not proud of it, but it's funnier in hell. So my old house, one of the old houses I had. I was driving down the road, wasn't going to go home, but there was a car in the driveway. And I'm like, well, no, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Now, nobody's home. And the pole in my driveway, you have to pull in my driveway. It's just something you ain't just going to come off the road and, like, pull in. Mm -hmm. So I did a UE jump the curve, and I pulled up behind him. Now, don't forget, I'm off duty. And the guy's sitting in the car, and I go up and knock on his window. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm going to visit my buddy. I'm like, really? I was like, how many is with you? He's like, oh, just myself. And I was like, I don't think you're going to be truthful with me, are you? And he says, what do you mean? And I was like, I want to ask you one more time. So who's your buddy's name? Well, I don't know. It's a friend of mine that's with me. So there's two of you here, right? And guess what he got met at the, at the window? My 1911 45 right against his forehead. And I told him, if you move, you're dead. 
I call for backup. He was by himself, but he didn't mess himself. So, yeah, he was getting ready to do something he shouldn't have he was going to do, but I got it in before he did it. So it was funny because the, the law enforcement that showed up didn't know who the hell I was. I was on the phone with dispatcher. I'm like, this is what it looked like. This is what I'm wearing. I got a gun and gets this guy's forehead. Don't shoot me. Don't mm-hmm. shoot me, please. So they you know, came up and I'm like, I'm not letting go of my gun until you all get this guy under control. Because if he reaches, he's gone. You know how but many ladies times and gentlemen, you gotta be careful. That happens often. Yes. It happens often. And and I recall something very similar to that happening years ago. Uh the as I remember, the wife was a border patrol agent. The husband was a a contractor of some sort. Uh, It's Sunday morning. They had a they had an adult teenage, but adult uh, son and daughter. Um, The the boy and the girl were told when you come the last person in the house, make sure you lock the door before you go to bed. They didn't set up and wait for these these uh, kids to come home. But when they came home on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, they told them, you guys come in, the last one in, make sure the doors are locked. They didn't do that this particular day. Uh, mom and dad were in bed. Dad got up to, to take a shower. Mom was still laying in bed. There's a large body size mirror uh, in the bathroom that can show down the hallway. Um, on this particular day, dad was in there taking a shower and an idiot, in comes idiot, <laughs> walking into this house. And the first thing that he does is he walks down the hallway and mom in bed knows that her husband's in the shower because she can hear the shower running. She looks in the mirror and it's a stranger. It's a strange man walking down the hallway. She slides open the, uh, she slides open the, uh, the uh, chest of drawers next to the bed, the nightstand and pulls her gun. He walks back down to the bathroom and urinates in the bathroom while the husband's taking a shower. Now the husband says, oh. I, I know that's not my wife. He said, it sounds like a horse going, uh, you know, going to the bathroom in this toilet here. And he says, I flipped open the shower curtain. And he says, I see a strange man using my toilet. And he says, he says, he asked the man, who are you? And the the man, the suspect, says, who are you? This went on for, for a second. The husband uh, got flustered, fell out of the shower, out of the bathtub, onto the floor, naked, all soaking wet. The man comes out of the bathroom, and right then the, the, the wife was already down the hallway with her gun. And when we got over there, she had the gun on him. She had him sprawled out on the kitchen floor waiting for us. And that's where he's, that's where he stood. So this happens quite a bit, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit. I mean, it happens a lot. Whether people are drunk out of their mind or higher, you know, higher than a gourd. uh, um, It happens quite a bit more than people know. Well, I made sure and I made sure this guy understand the Commonwealth of Kentucky's law because I was, I was law enforcement in another state. But I just want to make sure and let him know that why he wasn't going to meet his fucking maker that day. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was out in the front yard instead of in the house. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I went back and looked it up. It is called, in most states, a death in a home, no matter how it occurred, is not considered a material fact. Mm-hmm. And is not required to be disclosed. Mm-hmm. A murder could have occurred days ago, a uh, days ago, and the seller does not have to let you know. I told you it's been changed. Mm-hmm. And that also has to go with ooh, ghost and probably Bigfoot. Just want to throw that in there. Now I would get upset. I, I thought you just cocked a gun at first. See, now that's PTSD kicking in right there. Yeah. When I heard that, I thought that was a revolver being cocked. So <laughs> that caught my attention real quick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so they have changed that. Now, if I bought a house that that one guy that uh, 
end up feeding the peanut butter too and sold his house, bought his house, and found out that I had problems with, you know, Sasquatches or Bigfoot, I think I'd be a little bit upset. I would. I certainly would. Um, and I've said this many, many times before when, uh, thank you, Jeremy. I, I, I see your, your notice there. I'll check it, uh, as we go on. Um, to me, to me, when, when people bait, remember the, uh, remember Brian Barber, when we had him on the show, he was explaining his experience with, with baiting, um, or gifting Bigfoots with peanut butter and stuff. And I like Brian. I like him a lot. He's good. He's a good friend and stuff. But, but the thought that 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 a DNR uh, officer would play, uh, would would joust with this with this man over um, animals. She didn't say she would not say Bigfoot. She would not say Sasquatch. But, but the idea that the bears would run around the woods, collect these empty uh, peanut butter receptacles take them to the the next neighbor's house, throw them in the yard, pound on the side of the house, and do this on and off, peep in the windows, and then scare uh, one of the neighbors off their property to the point where they want to put the place up for sale. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. That that happens quite a bit. And I know that I've I've got a report from Michigan it's not a newer report. It's an older report. Nonetheless, it's it's one of the reports where uh, the husband says, you know, I cut the grass all the time. I use a, a lawn tractor. And and he says, I know what's out there in the weeds and I know what that what's out there in the swamp. And I forbade my children to play out here after dark out in the backyard. And he says, I can't handle this anymore. Worrying about my kids. And um, we're gonna we're gonna put this place up for sale and get out of here, and move back into the city. That was his words. And so, you know, when I look at these these areas, we talked about. I think we talked about before, and I wanted to get in with uh, Richard Saul when he comes onto the show, and and it's been very very busy, and and I understand that with the holidays and stuff. But when Richard comes on, we're gonna discuss the Miller document. That's pretty fascinating, Grizz. Uh, this is a document that, that that people said was a was a hoax, was a fraud, was a fake, and stuff. But I, I don't think so. And there's a lot of reasons why I say that. But uh, you know, my question is, I want to know what people think. If you move into a house, a residence, condo, townhome, whatever, and you have problems with Bigfoot. And you were not told, how would you handle that? We'll be right back. I want to hear y'all's answers. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Rolling the Bones Around the Cage with myself, a gum chewing bow. God, yes. Another edition brought to you by Western Bigfoot and Paranormal Investigations, LLC. Thank you, Don. Wonderful. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, what would you do if you end up buying a place? a lake, a cabin, and you found out after you spent your money and clothes that you had issues with Bigfoot. 
what would you do? How would you handle that? Jeremiah is like, hmm, that's assuming you know it's Bigfoot. Well, sooner or later, you are going to find out what is causing hell and havoc around your property. So, yes, let's just say you know you found out. So let's assume, you know what assumes means, it makes an ass out of you and me, but let's hypothetically think that you know it is. Well, what, how would you handle that? What would you do? What legal ramifications do you have? None. Now you got companies out there. That is wild. Who died in your home or whatever that was. I mean, there was a list of them. It was like Carfax. <laughs> Anything to make a money off America, man. But I would be furious. I would run them out somehow. Uh, I would uh, put up a bunch of troll, and since I know how to get rid of them now, troll cams, cams, floodlights. But anyways, I just... That, that just blows my mind. And we were talking about the other day, Val, about uh, clothes, uh, clotheslines missing. Mm -hmm. And people were like, no. I'm like, yeah. They're like, no. And then somebody got on the group like, yeah, they're still on my clothes. Mm -hmm. Standing Stone says, Grizz, tell Val about the videos I share with you. It's supposed to be close up of a real Bigfoot. Uh, very interesting pitch black face. Now, I haven't got to have an, an opportunity to watch that. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, it's a close-up, a face of two images. Uh, that's how busy I've been, Standing Stones. So I will watch it tonight. Uh, and no, no offense to anybody out there recording, because here's the deal. With all this AI, CHT, chat, whatever it is, it, whatever they got out there on the market, I don't know what's real or not anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Unless you know somebody that took the, the photography or the photograph, or the video. <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the sad thing about it. So, you know, like the cloaking video. If if anybody besides Barb Shoe would have been said, you know, I got this in 2014, and everybody and their brother in Hollywood tried to debunk it, mm -hmm. you know, I would I would never show that video because I'd be like, oh, that's that's made up. That's that's because back then we used to look at pixels. Remember. Look at that. It's been cut oh. out. Now you, you can't tell. So crazy. If you know how to contact me, I will try to share standing stones. Uh, crazy. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. that you like to see it? I'll pull it up right now. Let me pull up my yeah. Facebook account. Now I do know that uh, in the, in the research that I've done, um, Bigfoots have been, their face. In fact, let me let me pull up some of the, some of the sample excerpts that I have here for that. Now, the one I saw over at Sonia's house, it looked like the typical shaggy, raggy old dog. Mm -hmm. You could not see the face, but you saw everything else in the outlines and and the matted hair. But, but you, couldn't, you couldn't see the face, though. No, could not see the face. Uh, that's how much hair it had. Mm -hmm. So, and what it looked like, if if I if I was not an experienced person, when it comes to military, government, or LE, I would have mm -hmm. said there was somebody in a ghillie suit oh, yeah. that was heavy set it in the bottom part that lost weight. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it looked like from a distance and at, at, at my first impression. But I know what a person in a ghillie suit looks like. Mm -hmm. And they don't make big ghillie suits for big people. No, no. So. It just doesn't uh, make sense. No, it, it, it doesn't. And like I said, and plus we know, uh, I'm bringing it up right now, Standing Stones. So let me pause this. Let me parachute pants oh okay let me share this video here and let me make sure i get the audio with it here present share screen all right face of the squatch people now i know what different faces look like but here we go yeah. <laughs> Sounds uh, like samurai, samurai chatter. Hey folks, beautiful morning here. 
um, I have something to share with you that is extremely significant and important. And um, uh, there's been many times I've said I have things that I show in person only. Well, I've recently be been given permission to share them publicly. And I was actually given a direct message from Neff's family shortly after that last video um, with the par uh, partial selfie face shot that uh, uh go to the end of the clip he's telling show. me okay and let's see oh he's looking in a window hold up there we go uh, it's just incredible so have an awesome day enjoy these and i'll see you soon let me get rid of the comments <laughs> Most people have no clue that in 2020 All right. the best way that is it ladies and gentlemen world. there let me get to his comments here and we close out the video so i don't hear all this chatter in the background uh hello there kelly welcome to the show uh, it's at the end uh the two picks were taken seconds apart the ones to the left and right the fence uh that was pretty wild stuff uh i do say yeah uh, what's the light in the fence next to the towel? I think it would look like a reflection to me. I could have been wrong. But uh, what do you think about that, Val? Well, it's, uh, it seems like I've seen or heard something like this similar to this uh, from Ontario. Something, something, something. It's in my, it's back in the recesses of my mind. I, I re recall uh, Mike, the, 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 fellow's name Mike and it was repeating the individual's name there's a lot of um, debate over that particular uh, if it's the same one over that particular video and I don't know that it, it is but it's interesting um, but now, now I would love to put the voice on a, on a spectrograph or yes. you know <clears throat> what I'm saying and, and mm -hmm. look at the frequencies and, and pitches mm-hmm mm -hmm get the inflection and the yes the uh nuances of of the voice and stuff i don't i don't know that that's ever been done but uh it was interesting now was there a double double exposure on that because it seemed like there were two now there were two pictures taken side by side seconds okay. apart. oh okay all right so it wasn't just a a blooper or anything yeah no. it's, it's no. interesting very very interesting um to your to your second part um 
uh, you were talking about the Sasquatch faces and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I've I've uh, I've seen a lot of different um, takes on on the face. Now, in in my particular case, uh, the hair, the the face had very very little hair on it, and I think I described it as is. And I don't know if it was oily because it was extremely hot and humid during my experience in Michigan. But the hat, the, the face took on the appearance of plastic, almost plastic, uh, um, pasty, pasty, oily uh, complexion to it, but a pink complexion. And now, Grizz, I know you've seen you've seen deceased people before, what they look like. Yes, they've been correct. sitting there for a while. And that's that's the impression I got, but um, but some of these some of these people uh, report some of the witnesses. This report, is the one that right here is the vows, the one that looked like the one I saw, right there. Yeah, so the right the, there. The, the so the, hay, the the face isn't uh, that is that the one in uh, Tennessee that you've seen? Uh, yes, the one in it's Tennessee. Awesome. And this is not the this is not the actual photograph. No. No, I just Googled this to try yeah. to find if I can find one to show the resemblance of what I saw. This is what it looked like. This is the long hair mm -hmm. and everything I'm, I'm, I was talking about referring to. Now, now, brother, when you look at that picture, can you see why, can you understand why people uh, would call that dog man? It looks like the old were werewolf faces from uh, the movies, the Hollywood movies, right? I mean, that's what I would say when I, when I would look at something like this. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, and and her and her hair was this long throughout the whole body. Mm -hmm. shaggy. So shaggy, yes, like a dog, like like an uncut, trim dog. So yes. Mm -hmm. So, and and the one that I seen had no hair. Well, you, I, I'm sure you've seen the the photo of of it before. It it had no hair possibly because it was red and light complected pink complected but it had no uh, the face wasn't buried in hair it 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 uh, resembled human being right here this this photo uh one two the second picture over to the uh, right this one oh this right, one right right down below that Chris. this one the second row over here the second photo to the um, here. Let me see what you're pointing at because you're right and my left. All right, where are you pointing yeah. at? Right here. This one right here. This, right. this photo I from uh, Todd uh, standing. All right, let me go back to uh, there. Oh, I didn't mean to hit remove. There we go. Let me go back to Sasquatch faces. Mm -hmm. And you're saying Todd standing. So you yeah. see where my arrow is right now? Yeah. Go to the next line. The next okay. row. And it'll be the second picture in on this on the next row. This one? Nope. Go up. Go up one more row. Go to the uh, go to your to your left. Right here. Uh, one the second picture on that on that top row right there. This one. Yes, exactly. Todd Stanley's That's... picture. Okay. Now the Michigan picture, the next the Michigan uh, photo that I took looks similar to that to me that facial uh, uh appearance looks remarkably human doesn't it yeah it does yeah that's what i've seen exactly the the, the type that i've seen exactly and uh a lot of the a lot of the descriptions by witnesses and remember i'm talking about going through 140,000 reports all across north america um, there's been reports of, of pink complexion, like, like pink domesticated pigs. You, you know what I'm talking about that type of, com uh, complexion. There's been, there's been reports of white, like a ghost, white complexion. There's been reports of black complexion. Mm -hmm. like, then you got the scar faced ones and the thick skins. Yes, exactly. and, yes. And then there's been all sorts of descriptions of hairy face you know uh hair all over the face just like you were you were showing which is hard to so discern. somebody asked me a minute ago about the hair covering the face part of the face was covered with hair mm -hmm. it wasn't all the way visible 
Mm-hmm. So it was like, it was just put my beard on top of my forehead and bring it down. Oh, gee. So almost, yeah. I mean, that's why I said it looked like almost if, if you weren't trained, you would think mm-hmm. it was somebody in a ghillie suit. Yeah, yeah. So, but this thing was completely almost engulfed in hair. But the but issue was, is, t- Chris, uh-huh. uh, in, a, in a ghillie suit, there's no form to it. Right. But when you When you're looking at a real individual, a real creature, a Sasquatch creature, you see shoulders. You definitely see square shoulders. Oh no, there were there was a complete outline. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And it had no neck either. I mean, it yeah. was just like like I am. It was like the head sitting on top mm-hmm. the on top of the body. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing was only forty feet away, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And it was oh, how beautiful the storm is. And I'm like, oh my god, I ain't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Uh, there actually was, and I was trying to find it, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot find it now, uh, but there was actually uh, a, a cheat, a cheat, a sheet that actually shows the different types of Bigfoot in America, and I cannot find that. And I try to Google it, and it actually had the different uh, faces and everything. Uh, Here's something similar, but it's not the same. Now, so, now that sheet, Grizz, was that a actual photos or were they were they uh, composites? Composites from mm-hmm. witnesses mm-hmm. from across the country. Gotcha. And mm-hmm. what they were is that they would go and people would investigate, uh, let's say in California, mm-hmm. in certain parts of the California, and let's say that they saw this one. Mm-hmm. And then 30 miles down the road, then they saw this one. Mm-hmm. So which represents a different clan because in gorillas, the we found out uh, silverbacks or whatnot, the females are exercised or kicked out of the clan to go find a mate. Mm-hmm. So either she brings back the male or she never comes back. Mm-hmm. So different, different genes. It, that is correct. So now seeing something like this, I don't know, because that looks more human to me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, everybody, you know, when they come up with these composite drawings, they're trying to get an idea what these things look like, because there's so many different types of uh, witnesses. Mm-hmm. And they're finding out too, like this one, for whatever reason, you may not see, but only down in, say, Tennessee or Kentucky, but not out Midwest. Mm-hmm. So, what does that represent? You know, does that represent another ethnic background, another race of genes? I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, nobody's an expert, nobody knows. Well, so. well Something puzzling about that that I've always had since I started this back in 2012 was that was there were Sasquatches that bore the physical appearance of of um, African uh, appearance. You know what I'm yes, talking about? Yes, or Indian. Yes, and and then. Yes. By contrast, there there's some that that take on the appearance of blonde hair, blue eyed, blonde haired, green eyed people, and uh, it you know I'm just here. It it would start it started to rock. That is correct. So so I take a, so I I get the impression that that somewhere somehow human beings have been been uh, crossed with with these individuals someplace and that's what we get that's what we see so all of us human beings aren't tall we're not all short we're not all skinny we're not all uh athletic uh we come in all different sizes all different shapes all different colors and i believe that these things do the same thing you know all dogs don't look alike are they they're different dogs. Are they different species? No, they're all from the dog species, but they're different, uniquely different. Just like human beings, you take your finger, you raise your finger, your finger has I feel a like finger. I'm getting ready to get a filter body test. 
Yeah. Uh, that's your, finger, <laughs> your finger has uniquely its own fingerprint. Nobody in this world has ever had a duplicated fingerprint. Never. Seven billion people. That's how unique human beings are. That's a fact. And now uh, there's no there's no two human beings. There's some human beings that 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 look pretty close unless they're cloned. Uh, human beings look pretty unique. You know, we're not, we don't all have red hair and, uh, I know I don't. And, um, um, so I think these things are, are very much like, like human beings in that, in that aspect that there, there's a lot of different unique shapes and sciences, appearances. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's some, uh, Bigfoot Sasquatches, uh, that a lot of people say have square teeth like like you and i square uh some that have fangs like uh, like wild boar some of them uh some of them are described as tusk like like elephant tusk some of them have been described with horns like goats some of them have been described as having tails uh you know those that i seen didn't have tails but uh Somebody's seeing those, and, and somewhere along the line, the DNA is being crossed. For what reason? I don't know. Is this now? We know Nephilim made it with women in the biblical terms, in the biblical times, allegedly, right? Mm -hmm. And we know back in the Indian days that they would take their women from the camps or their tribes and take them as whatever and did with them as they pleased. And they took the children and ate them. So we know about that allegedly. Now, to uh, answer somebody's question, which clone is Johnny Depp? That I don't know, or Johnny D. Uh, now, the pictures I was showing are composite drawings of mm -hmm. eyewitnesses' testimony on what they said they saw when they were drawing or computer animated, and they went back and cover them to try to put and portray a picture of what one would look like if, if you saw this creature today. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So, yeah, those were not real pictures of actual Bigfoot people. No. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. It's pretty interesting. Pretty it interesting. is. It really is. And we really so, don't know. We don't really know, really don't know who's dabbling with what, as far as DNA goes. No. Uh, um, um, I don't know. Um, incidentally, Jeremiah, I did uh, read your email. I'll get back with you after the show, and we'll we'll chit chat about that. And he's talking about that railroad. Um, he was talking about the abandoned railroad. Uh, some missing people and stuff like that. Um, there are a lot of reports. In fact, uh, in, in fact, railroad is one of the uh, one of the um, um, Lance. If you're on the if you're on the uh, internet right now, catch the show "Rolling the Bones with Grizz and Gumshoe." It's a pretty good uh, show. Um, I'm getting. In, in inundated with uh, a lot of emails and stuff right now. Um, What's well, good? <laughs> as we speak. So uh, just to answer, uh, go back with uh, what Jeremiah was asking. And he brought up in a couple shows ago about abandoned uh, railroads and stuff like that. Uh, I do I do several sets and, and subsets of uh, of groupings. And so a lot of things that I do when I go through reports is I flag, <clears throat> I flag particular words and terms. For instance, uh, abandoned barns, abductions, aggression, airplane helicopters, because a lot of aircraft are involved in Bigfoot reportings. Believe it or not, there are a lot. Helicopters, airplanes, small aircraft, as well as commercial aircraft. Uh, all fours, when I speak of all fours, I'm looking for reports that have, uh, that report uh, the individuals or individual on all fours running and then standing up and 
scooting on on two two legs and two feet. ATVs, blue lights. This is pretty interesting. When uh, this particular subgroup of lights uh, in one of your shows, Grizz, you were talking about orbs and lights and stuff like that. This happens often with Bigfoot reports. And what I do is I I uh, flag those words, those terms. When I see that in a report, I flag it. I want to know what color the lights are that, that people report, the orbs and stuff. And uh, you'd be surprised that the variances in color uh, for a lot of these things. Um, and, and this goes on uh, 280 times at least. So that's how vast this uh, this database is. So to, to Jeremiah's point, uh, he was talking about railroads. And railroad is another one that I watch closely and I flag because, mainly because when I started doing this, I realized that Bigfoot Sasquatches are very linear, meaning like wolves, like predators, wolves, they follow a straight line path. They always do. They'll follow the grid patterns of the uh, high utility towers. They'll follow the pipelines, the utility pipelines, and they follow railroads. And it might ex explain why um, from, from rural areas to highly developed inner cities and major cities, they've got reports of Bigfoot Sasquatch because they follow these railroads into these places. And railroads in particular, uh, I have at least, <clears throat> at least, uh, <coughs> excuse me, at least uh, several hundred reports of Bigfoot Sasquatches uh, in and around uh, railroad tracks. So it's not a coincidence. In order for it to be a coincidence, it has to happen at least three times. An event has to happen at least three times. But by the third time that it happens, it's, it's you know, it, it's beyond anomalies. It's, it's beyond happenstance. It's purposeful. So there's reasons for all this stuff. And in the case of uh, railroad tracks, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, uh, I'm scooting up here to, to find out what the total is up here that I got, that I'm aware of. 464 reports involving Bigfoots and railroads, railroad tracks. That's a lot. That is quite a bit. That's something worth watching. So uh, I know as a, as a law enforcement officer, I had the occasion to, to, uh, uh, join in on a uh, investigation because a train uh, a train engineer thought that he struck a, a human being on a railroad and anytime that happens it's it's not like a car accident it's a major investigation because you have a national agency that gets involved in that they want to know about these things this individual was very shook up he was uh, he was certain that he struck something, although, although um, you know, in any time you deal with railroad trains and engineers and stuff, you know that they can't stop like cars. You might have to, you might have to tra travel a mile or a mile and a half before you get to the end of the train and go back and trace back where he was to see if there was an individual or anything that he might have struck. In this case, he, he swore that, that that, that he struck something and we went back and checked and there was no evidence, no clothes, no, no blood, nothing that indicated that he struck anything, an animal or anything. And so these things happen. And, and, and because a lot of these areas going into cities and stuff are surrounded by uh, uh, swamp weeds, cocktails, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's no telling what's out there, really, seriously. And there's been reports in the past of people 
uh, making reports. Yeah, I seen a Sasquatch on a, on a railroad car. <laughs> Seriously. As, as a law enforcement uh, officer uh, doing the kind of stuff I was doing, mainly um, crime organiz criminal organizations and stuff, I was looking at um, the different organizations and groups and stuff, even even what we used to call hobos at one time. Uh, these were derelict people that were using trains to travel back and forth. And incidentally, um, Grizz, you were talking about you had a you had a show you had you have a show on missing persons and criminal investigations and that kind of stuff. Um, you know there was there were serial killers that have been known to use railroad cars to go from one place to another. It's not like driving in a car you can stop that car and and check it and stuff. But that's how they that's their mode of travel. So. So there was a lot of there was a lot of hijacking going on, a lot of theft going on, motorcycles, appliances, whatever, whatever. But all of a sudden, when you start getting these reports of Sasquatch riding the trains, all this stuff stopped. What happened? People get scared. People stop acting bad, and and uh, it's interesting. The whole thing, the whole dynamic behind it is very, very curious it's very very interesting and very very i mean it's 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 mind shattering to think that this this stuff goes on or has gone on all right uh is is your is your are you muted Gross. I've been talking. Y'all haven't heard our darn lick. I've been saying that's <laughs> awesome. No. But no, but what I've been trying to tell people all these years is that no matter what people tell you, you have to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was listening to a show the other night and they're calling these people, the watchers, they're calling them the, uh, what do you call the biblical people? The, uh, uh, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, not the watchers, there's another term, the sediments or the uh, sentinels. There we Sentinel. go. Sentinels, yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm just talking, Jeremiah. And I'm glad somebody uh, let me know you couldn't hear me. I'm just talking along. You know, it's funny. But no, and <laughs> you, you don't know because these things have been around before us. You know, and we got on a topic the other day. Christianity is roughly around well, over 2,000 years old. And that was made by man. And then you go back and you want to add whatever else you want to and take away whatnot. It, it is what it is. But, you know, when you hear stuff like Samurai Chatter from Ron Moorhead back in the Sierras, back in the 70s, 80s, whatever it was. And then you hear something like this. They mimic people, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, Sonny would tell you she will holler out a name for her animal and it will come back. And, <laughs> and it is not an echo. And we will hear on other shows, ladies and gentlemen, where the sea Sasquatches, Nephilims, yeah, Neph, uh, Sasquatches will be not in the mood to do owl calls and be like, hoo, 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 hoo. And it's like, well, why don't you just not even try then, you know? And it's just like they don't care sometimes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what does that mean? Are they just like in a bad mood because they're answering back and they don't want to answer or leave me alone, woman, or what's wrong with you? I mean, what does all this mean? I don't know. I don't have an answer. So, do no. you? You know, uh, that's in in that database. That's one of the things that I I look at as well. Is is um, um, I, I I call it I title it uh, Bigfoot speaking, and there's a lot of different uh, things that that have been reported by people over the years, and some of it is quite interesting, Chris. Um, I mean, uh, outside of that one incident on the uh, East Coast, I, I want to say Connecticut or Massachusetts, where uh, 
and I might have, pardon me if I if I told this before, but uh, it seems like uh, it, it happened around Vermont, Connecticut, or Massachusetts. Definitely on the East Coast, though, uh, where three men, three men went to town. You know, they didn't have cars, so they went to town to drink and party and carry on. On the way back around midnight, uh, they met up with a, a large eight or nine foot black Sasquatch and they were all terrified. And for the fact that, that uh, they heard this being, according to them, they heard this being asked them the directions for the next town. And they, one of them in that group said, oh, yeah, uh, it's it's 10 miles away. You got to go this way, go down that path. And it's 10 miles. And 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 that's the, that's the way it was. And, and these guys, yeah. swear, these guys swear by it. And it was on its way. Uh, but there's more like that. Um, some more, uh, some better, some less than that. But. Uh, these are a lot of reports that people have. And incidentally, while we're on that topic, there's a lot of there's a lot of testimony by witnesses all across North America that claim that uh, when they're frightened or bothered by Sasquatch, um, they feel that they understand uh, our English language because they'll tell them leave me alone and guess what they do they leave me alone sonia what sonia will tell you she'll walk out in the middle of her woods and have a conversation be like hey stop it guys knock it off mm -hmm. and she will communicate just like i am with you all mm -hmm. and they stop mm -hmm. Now, my communication ain't going to be verbal. It's going to be bang, 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 and a bunch of sawing down some trees and stuff. But that's just me. Now, I'm not saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a no-kill person. I just get a little antsy sometimes in the middle of the woods by myself. Now, the other night, Val, she's like, you want to see one? I'm like, see one what? She's like, you want to see that female you saw? I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> she's like, watch this. Now, you're going to see something and watch it blink. I'm like, okay, I'll watch it. And she turned her phone around because she was out in her yard. And there and behold was I shine, which was green. Mm -hmm. And it blinked. Not once, but several times. Mm. And she's like, I told you. I'm like, what? I was like, put the phone back. Put the phone back. Put the phone. Why'd you do that? I can see you anytime. You know, so she put the phone back. She already moved. So now how in the world do their eyes illuminate by themselves? Somebody, Jeremiah, Brian, Don, anybody crazy, which explain to me how their eyes illuminate by themselves. Because this was total darkness. Mm hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, these were not fireflies. Mm -mm. They were too high off the ground and too big and bright, and they were separated. And I mean, they were there. Were, there was a good distance between them. There were there was some distance. I can I can assure you that. So, <laughs> Jeremiah's like, I wonder if the tone in your voice plays a part, man. <laughs> Jeremiah, Sonia, honey. Can you please put the phone back so I can continue to watch the eye shine? Are you nuts? Put that phone back, woman. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, I don't get to go out and live luxury in life and see the things she does every scene, the glyphs and whatever, the rock formations and all the prints on her property and stuff. And, it, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess it probably was a little freaky to her or it or whatever it was out there. You know, not even 60 feet away, approximately. So, and she's like, oh, it's no big deal. This is, she's right here. Do you want to see? And I'm like, well, yeah, I want to see. <laughs> Who doesn't? But my thing is, is how 
do they shine? Standing Stone says a lot of blood behind them eyes. But blood glows in them? Now, the blood I've seen does not glow. I mean, that could be, you know, because our blood is blue or purple, right, until, it, until oxygen hits it. Uh, it is a way of communication, Don says. That's what we theorize is what, what we are told. So, but she's got white, she's got orange, she's got red, she's got green, she's got blue, uh, yellow, uh, damn much a rainbow. Might as well just call them Skittles. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I, I agree, Chris. There's so many different colors reported. Um, I just look for the basic colors, but, but there's a menagerie of, of different colors. Uh, there's yellow, red, um, and I'm looking at my database right now. There's for eyes. There is uh, several. I'm sure several, several. Thousand. So they, so, yeah, they say bioluminescence. Now I can buy that because there are certain sea creatures in 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 the sea that has that their own chemical. Now, now the whites of our eyes is is called sclera. Right, and, but we're talking about the 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 dark pupil areas of the eyes, but there are reports. There are reports of black eyes. I mean, black. Yes, old black eyes. No sclera involved. That is in correct. All. That would be creepy. That's creepy. Devoid of any any lightness. It's, it's so talking to Barb Shoe Shop Shop or Shop Shoe, mm -hmm. yeah Shoe. Uh, sorry, Barb. Is that uh, she said uh, that when she was on her trip on her property with her people recently, uh, she went to put her drum up and she was like, "I smell blueberries." And what did what did what did we talk about before on the show about how they would rub fragrances and flowers yeah. on them? Yeah, a lot so of, she went and got other campers. I'm like, you smell this? I smell blueberries. And there was no blueberries around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are they? You know, is it that time of the year where they're trying to attract a mate? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I made a mistake on one of the shows. I googled how gorillas. Went out and found a mate, and I should have read it before our, yeah, before I read it out loud, and I didn't, and I embarrassed the hell of myself, Al. Mm. But there is a way that the females gets the attention of the males. <laughs> and now, do Sasquatches do that? I have no idea. So, black-eyed children. Yes, Don. So... Mm. Yeah, uh, I th I was t I I think I was referring to a, a friend of mine, Bigfoot Tony in in Michigan. I've never been to his property before, but uh, he claims, and this is the first time that I've heard that. Although I found reports um, in line with what he said, so I have to believe that there's some some truth in the matter that uh, some females like. Like human beings, some people are better at personal hygiene than others, but there are Sasquatches that are very, very particular about their hygiene. And some of them uh, have been reported to have looked like, like they brushed their hair. Yes. Very clean. Not stinky. Not uh, ugly in that, in that aspect. But some of the females smelled like... Uh, Bouquets of uh, herbs and flowers, and uh, and and have been cited uh, bathing themselves, probably to to keep themselves clean. Now, in addition to that, um, I've mentioned before that there's a anthropologist, <clears throat> a um, anthropologist that that worked for the military that claimed that. Uh, his his uh, um, familiarization with with Bigfoot Sasquatches, he says that uh, some of these individuals want to emulate human beings, people, 
and some of them can pass for people outside of their their physical attributes uh, maybe they're tall maybe they get their head is cone shaped but some of them cut their hair yes that. cut their hair and he says if they put clothes on you were talking about clothes earlier earlier in the show if they put clothes on they'd pass for a human being absolutely now this is this is a, a learned scholar and a member of academia hired by the government to study these things and this is what he says this is exactly what he says um there's been reports in michigan it, and and i've got at least two reports of people witnesses claiming that they've seen cavemen not not hairy all harried up and and stuff like that but they look like cavemen um they look like something that stepped out of the uh, prehistoric text books and stuff um i don't know this is a this is when when you delve into this topic um you never know where it's going to go because it's it's you're it's wide not open believe it. this it's you're not gonna believe open. this i gotta share this link before i even read this so i just pulled up an article val mm -hmm. and uh it's called uh sapiens.org and of course let me click on the link again well hold on again let me copy the link well anyways let me just share it so uh did you know that gorillas chimpanzees and apes self-medicate themselves how that's what I, I just I mean I'm a fact checker, you know. Oh, I, I love uh hold on. I look, I'm so excited I can't find my buttons right now to hit what button to share the screen. Just bear with me here. I, I'm just floored. I, I just can't believe that this is actually true. Cause, you know, because I kept thinking, you know, I hear the stories about grooming, you know, and even Sonya would say they're beautiful hair, and some of them are just mad at and Remember that one she said that was all stinky and everything it was getting into her chicken coop and all right here we go ladies and gentlemen let's present and there's no audio so I have to worry about audio here we go uh yeah here we go no nope. all right so it says here what champions knows about giving medicine so there's been observations that uh and this has been published in the journal of current biology described they saw how chimpanzees apply insects to their own open wounds and more mainly the wounds of other community members too but not only that they use some invertebrates uh, traditional human medicine too for example leeches have been used to clean wounds slugs and snails i mean how would they know how to do all this then it goes down and talks about caterpillars and certain types of infections, what plants they use to eat for inflammation. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on and on. And the use of insects didn't stop. And remarkable aloe care, caring for each other, which we know they do. But the article goes on and on and tells you about self-medication. It has been long associated with ingestion of plants. So, and this is not only in apes and orangutans to mix saliva with leaves from plants contain anti-inflammatory properties. I mean, so this is what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, mammals are especially known to rub themselves against trees. And we know that because of deer, right? You know, to get the velt off their antlers and also to rub their scent. Remember, it says pick up scent and so forth in deer ticks, but in primates, anointing behavior is also widespread, not clear weather. In chimpanzees, back rubbing the insects, but whatever, open wounds, it does suggest it would be an act of medication. So, and there's different links within this article that you can click on, and it will take you and slingshot you to more uh, medical journals mm -hmm. that has proven that they treat themselves. Now, they're not out there taking hydrocodone pills or oxy. No, no. 
Brother, but, d don't uh, people use maggots in some cases? For, yes. Um, uh, to eat away the dead uh, flesh and stuff? Yes. And, and open wounds? Dirty yes. Wounds? Seriously, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what we could learn. You're, you were talking about a low, um, that cactus plant, that plant that, that thrives in the desert uh, climates, even around America. Um, it seems to me that, that it was used for burns and sunburns and has other medicinal value besides, besides uh, people eating it. Um, it's it's uh, topical. A treatment for a lot of different things but, you ever uh, been turkey hunting not me yeah if you if everybody's ever been turkey hunting and there's been a fire out in the woods you <laughs> will find turkeys they will ro roll around the ash to get rid of the turkey mites so I didn't yes know they, had mites. they had mites yes turkey mites yes they do so, and I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when I, you know, I mean, for giggles, I wanted to fact check this because we hear these reports. I do too. So, I mean, I just don't want to run down a country road and see Bigfoot with big old sunflower in the middle behind its ear, mm -hmm. you know, because nobody's going to believe Grizzly. No. But to read that medical journal, you know, I do not know a lot about silverbacks, apes, or chimpanzees. I, I mean, I'm not an anthropologist. I'm not a whatever who studies that. Gorillas or apes or that species. So, yes, Samantha, Jeremiah, I know, right? But they do. Now, so. now I, I noted that uh, in, in my uh, experience my encounter there were a, tre a tremendous amount of of flies and mosquitoes and it seemed like the closer we got to the epicenter of of that group that that we walked into um the flies those biting flies you know what biting flies are they're horrible they're worse than mosquitoes they're terrible yeah. yes they're terrible so so uh a good indicator uh, that would they would tell you a good tell that would tell you that you're close to to something like that are the insects you know just like bears bears you know got swarms of flies hanging around them insects and all kinds of stuff but uh, there had been numerous reports of bigfoots uh, looking like uh, like they crawled out of a mud pie just covered with with mud and I'm wondering if it it's too to uh ward off insects you know biting flies and mosquitoes and fleas and stuff like that there's also been reports of uh, uh what people call lizard man but it, it's a sasquatch uh, adorned in uh seaweed and in in uh, swamp grass and stuff like that probably for the same reason i would imagine what do you think so yes, I've, I've I've heard the swamp thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the movie who has that was a child. Mm -hmm. uh, I have reports of people seeing a Bigfoot covered in moss. Yes. So what does that represent? Is that keeping the insects and bugs off of them? I don't know. The the horse has a tail for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, this way the the flies and the and the, what do you call those horse flies away from from biting them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is these things are so intelligent. You know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I told Val, I would laugh and call them apes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you can put out tape recorders and they learn how to turn things off, and I, and I show people, I got four or five, six by my head, all different makes and models, and they know how to turn it off and put it back. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know little Johnny's out there drunk causing havoc in, camp, in campgrounds. Well, you can't blame little Johnny all across the world at one time. There's no way in hell. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's extra camo? Jeremiah, I have no idea. They're so good at cloaking. I have an article that shows, uh, I don't know, if, let me see if I can pull it up. 
Because I always, I always use polar bears as a reference. Polar um, bear hair under microscope. Let me see if I can get an image. Because what it does underneath the microscope, it takes the light. And here's a good picture. If I can bring it up here. All right, let me share this image. Because somebody allegedly has got Bigfoot hair. And it says it, it's like a mirror. So this is how, oops, wrong one. There we go. And I'll blow it up on my screen. So this way you can blow it. That's what it looks like earning the microscope. Mm -hmm. Now, the polar bear hair is black, ladies and gentlemen. This is from the surrounding. Now, I know people are like, oh, he's so full of crap. Now, watch this. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. And I'm going to open up another browser. And let me go back to StreamYard here. And present, share screen. And uh, all right, here we are. Let's see here. Yeah, that's a polar bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, the polar bears, uh, let's see here. I haven't. Polar bears been found uh, inland mixed with grizzly? Yes, that is correct. And polar bears are supposed to be as aggressive or more there aggressive we go. Than, than grizzly? Yeah, a very, yes. I'm sorry. I don't think I can play possum. So now you're not going to be able to read that. So what I did is I copied and pasted. And this way you all can read what it says about polar bear hair. And it says for the audio people for tomorrow, it says polar bear hairs have two layers of fur. The undercoat and guarded hairs, the two layers provide extra insulation for the bears. Both layers of hair are translucent with black skin. Translucent with black skin underneath, but despite this, they appear white. Now, somebody typed something and it moved it, so I got to find my knees. And they appear white according to the WWF. That's not the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, people. This is because the translucent hair reflects sunlight, which makes them look white. Mm -hmm. So people claim they have Bigfoot hair, but they put it underneath the microscope. They're like, oh, it's not, it's not black. It's not red. So now they're saying that somehow that they can alter their hair like some fish do and chameleons and snakes and moths or whatever animal instinct, octopus, right? That can change their color right then and there to fit in with the background. So I have no idea. Now, where did that technology come from? Now, 2006, United States government says we can make a money disappear in a goldfish because they revealed that technology. And that was in 2006. Now, if they came out with that technology in 2006, when do you think they actually had that technology, Val? Long time ago. Yes, that is Long correct. Time. So, and that's why I usually ask people is not to not to trick people about the polar bear question is, you know, because a lot of people don't know that polar bears are black. And they always say, why? And I'm like, no, you're wrong. They're like, no, I'm not. I'm like, Google it. So, because the first time somebody told me that years ago, I laughed at them I'm like, man, you're not pulling the wolves over my eyes. So, yes. So, you know, what is the difference? Now, we have seen the video of alleged Bigfoot cloaking. And I, I just don't know. I just, I have no idea what they are.
Well, you know, uh, I was reading something uh, a short time ago about uh, about uh, bear DNA being so close to Sasquatch that it, it is it is um, believed that that's where the idea of <clears throat> the description that so many people misidentify bears as Sasquatch come from because there is a there is a resemblance in DNA between bear and Sasquatch. Incidentally, doesn't uh, Sasquatch hair isn't Sasquatch hair also hollow, unlike human yes. beings? Yes, it's supposed to be allegedly. Yes. And um, uh, looking at that visual that you had just posted of the polar bear, it seemed like that was also hollow. Um, although it was, it, that's just a picture, and that's that's what I gathered from what I've seen. Right. Underneath the microscope. Yes. Yes. I mean, we can't see that with our naked eye, but but it's apparently it's it's apparent that that it's visible, you know, with the aid of uh, a microscope and stuff like that. So I, I don't know. It's it's puzzling. The entire thing is is puzzling. So, so puzzling. So but my, my question is, too, is that, uh, you know, is the thing. How do they clothe? What makes them clothe? You know, now I was taught that they have things that they have taught their juveniles at an early age uh, on how to do things when they're young. Mm -hmm. Muted. Yes, yeah, so that is very interesting. Leave you too, baby. So, uh, sorry, that oh, was her calling. You wanted to hear that. No, I'm not saying that to you, <laughs> Val. That's why I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> but, uh, but no, and, and, and that's the thing, is that I, we were told, allegedly, that the Sasquatches, Bigfoot, Tungas, how, whatever you want to label them as, teach them at a younger age on how to cloak. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you, Jeremiah. You, you just made me feel real embarrassed. But yes, you made me blush. <laughs> Poor Val was like, what? <laughs> no. Poor kissy, Val. Kissy. Yeah. What did Jeremiah say? Kissy, kissy face. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, it is. It, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, you hear stuff like this, but we can't prove it, you know. And it goes back to uh, how do we know? Well, Look at the one we had on the show last week. He knows a whole lot more than what he's telling us. Who he, Grizz? Who he, the <laughs> one he refers to us as white man. Okay. Yes. Okay. The one who he says that they may be coming out with a booklet or a manual mm -hmm. on these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're talking I don't about think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think, yes, Barry, I don't think we referring to white men as a human population is ready to handle the facts and the truth. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I do not go out in the woods like I used to. I'm not going to lie. I do not. Nope. After I seen that cloaking video and I keep hearing these reports, things running up to you and all that. And then Sonny wants me to go out in the woods with her. Are you crazy? Me end up missing. Then we got reports. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen, during this camp out that they took a tape recorder and I'm not going to say gorilla tape. But that's what people were buying anymore instead of duct tape. I, I know that sounds from it, that sounds funny, but and they duct taped it inside their RV and put tiki torches around the RV by the door and by the window mm -hmm. to get these vocalizations and this chatter. And they were probably about roughly about 70 yards away, and they're like, Are you seeing this? And they're like, What? They're like, 
one of those tiki torches just went out. And another one went out. And another one went out. And they're like, we they're 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 full. There's there's no way that they're going out. So they're 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 sitting there and they're like, did you just hear that? They're like, did you not lock the door on the RV? They're like, we're amongst friends. Why am I going to lock the door on the RV? Do you know that that tape recorder was taken off that 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 what do you call it the screen and turned off and laid on the table and that son of a butt lit all the tiki torches back <clears throat> now you explain that hmm. now do they know how to play with fire i don't know if they have a little finger spark i don't know if they took it they didn't say they saw a torch <laughs> go back and light the other torches Mm -hmm. They said one by one, each torch went. <sniffs> now, ladies and gentlemen, and you want to make fun of me that I carry holy water and bing things and go bang. Hello, Stingray. Welcome to the show. Now, what does that make you think when you hear something like that? Creepy. Creepy. It, what it reminds and, me of the Hollywood the Hollywood uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Predator. Yes. Uh, that's what it makes yes. me think of. And then again, I think of that gentleman that you mentioned his name or that show uh, that was absolutely having a breakdown on a podcast. Yes. His experience and stuff. Yes. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, so do I, and, and, People tell everybody now in these groups, do not go into the forest alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you may think it's funny by laughing at me because I'm scared. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, I watched the David Platty's 411. After seeing things and know things that walk upon this earth can do things that we as human beings can do better than us. There's something going on, ladies and gentlemen. And they're not just damn apes and primates and gorillas and whatever. These things are very intelligent. So it's time to get out of Dodge. Yeah, there you go, Jeremiah. And you it wonder, is interesting. And you wonder why uh, somebody doesn't want to talk about them. Well, if this wasn't this lady and her group of people on her property, I wouldn't even be telling the story. What what state is that, by the way, Grizz? Uh, California. Oh, okay. Uh, well, no, I think it's Washington State. Washington State. It's either Washington State or California. It's right there in that sector. Pacific Northwest. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, she, and, and she'll tell you. Now... Does she have stories? I mean, she will. She can sit down for hours and fascinate the socks off anybody. And that's how, I mean, she's been around since 10, 12, 14 years and been doing this. And she's very well credited. She's very well known. She's not a hoaxer by any means. And once you meet the woman, you can tell by interviewing her that she's 100% legit. Mm hmm and she'll tell you, hey, hon, if you, I don't need pictures or anything like that. You want to see one? Come on out. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is go out in the woods and tell them, hey, I'm here. I want to see something, do something. And she'll tell you, don't try to be sneaky around them because they don't like that. Announce your intentions. And I'm sitting there going, there we go. Having that line of communication opening up again. You know, Barry. Before he goes out in the woods. Remember? <clears throat> so. Yes, it's interesting, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this um, database on speaking. I see uh, people have reported Russian language. What sounded like Russian language to them. People have reported 
people have reported um, Chinese language. Um, people have reported backward English language. I know that uh, somebody down in the deep south, Mississippi area, Georgia area reported Spanish uh, from these from these uh, beings. Where did they pick up this language from? Excuse me. <coughs> uh, people have reported a German dialect. Um, where do these where do these things pick up the language from? From listening to people. Um, you were talking about missing people, people going out in the woods by themselves. You got reports of uh, witnesses saying, yeah, something was calling my name across the river. And, and I'm out here by myself. And I'm supposed to go over there across the river to find out who's calling my name. Uh, no, that's that's not good. That's not good. What intention do they have? Um, who knows? Uh, I wouldn't follow it. Um, I know that there's been many reports of, um, of uh, people reporting something, somebody calling for help out in swamps. Remote, yes. Isolated areas. Yes. Um, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there. Sorry. Not by myself, not not by myself. It's one thing to go out there to help somebody, but it's another thing to walk yourself into a into a into a trap. You don't want to do that. Well, let me tell you something about when's the last time you stopped on the side of the road and helped somebody, bro. I stopped. I said, it's been a, it's been a few years, but I, I know that I stopped on the freeway to help a police officer struggling with a oh, man. A police officer. Yes, that's sir. different. Yes, sir. But I'm broke down on the side of the road and the way I look, are you going to stop and help me? In a minute. I'd stop. I'd yeah. stop you, bro. I, couldn't, I couldn't pass you up. No, no. Honestly, uh, uh, I don't know. It's it's in everybody's heart, you know, what they're what they're. Nobody do. does. Yeah. The hell with you. You're a bad guy. I don't know if I'm gonna get whack. I mean, you know, I've, I, you know, you you do things that you follow your heart. What your heart tells you, your mind, your heart tells you to do. And look what happened to all those women that follow their hearts yes. end up in yes. a ditch or murdered. Yes. Yes. Don't I know? So. Don't I know? It's, um, it is a creepy thing. Now, Stingray carrying a woman with the baby in a, in a snowstorm. First thing I'd be thinking of is that is a setup. As soon as I pull over, I'm going to get conked in the head. Now, I did stop on the interstate once, and I was already retired. And it was a Hispanic family with a bunch of little kids, and his serpentine belt came off. And how it slipped off, I couldn't tell you. And he was probably about four miles from a truck stop. I'm like, look, I was like, I'm going to tell you something. And I laid my badge and wallet on, on, the, on the hood of his car. I was like, I want you to see what that says. Do you understand English? That says, that says retired. That means I'm packing heat. You know what heat means? It's something you don't plug in in the wintertime. So I'm going to pat you down if you want my help. Do you understand me? He's like, absolutely. So I patted him down. I gave him a ride, got him some tools, and we put his serpentine belt on. And that was the only time in my 39 or 49, 30, I wish I was 39, out of my 48 years that I ever stopped to help somebody unless I was in uniform. And if I was in uniform, I would still pat you down for my safety because I don't know Jay from Jack because mm -hmm. let me tell you something. A year ago, my buddy's son was coming home from work and the Palmyra police officer up in Indiana saw somebody broke down. 12, 31 o'clock in the morning, flat tire, no big deal. Mm -hmm. He pulls over. Before he calls it in, what does this 
person do? He gets out of the car. Hey, man, what's going on? Now, here comes Marty's son. Firefighter gets off work. Hey, you need help? Next thing you know, a 12 gauge comes out. The officer gets shot twice and his son gets murdered right there on scene. Over a car that was broke down. You never know who you're going to meet on the side of the road, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what they look like. I don't care how short the shorts are. So it's changed from the 70s and 80s yeah. where they used to set up people to get clonked in the head and stuff on the side of the expressway and they lay in the ditch waiting for you. I'm just telling you, when in doubt, call it in. Don't stop. Call 911. Let, let them know where you're at, what color car it is, and how many ve- people are in that vehicle and tell them where the vehicle's at. Mm-hmm. Don't put yourself in that position. Now, now these days, we got to worry about carjackings. How and where we get on this subject? Stop it. Just stop it to help somebody. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Mr. Guess One. So, yes. Yeah, it is. It's it's very, it's very, very dangerous. It's unpredictable. And, and um, things have changed a lot. <clears throat> things have changed a lot. Very, very rapidly. Um, I don't know. I just when I th- when I think about when I think about some of the stuff that goes on now, considering you know what I've seen, what I've done, <clears throat> where I've been, uh, you just <clears throat> you have to. You know, you have to give praise to a lot of these men and women that are out there now doing this the same work. Really, it's it's not like it was 10 years it's ago, not. 20 years ago. It's 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 violent. <clears throat> it's very, very violent. And I think it's only going to get worse. It so, is. And let yeah. me tell you something. If you're fighting with the cop and I'm driving along, two things are going to happen. You're not coming out alive. Either I'm going to drop you or I'm going to run over your ass. Mm-hmm. So I'm just letting you know straight up. So I'm I'm getting too old to fight. I'm not like I was in my 20s and 30s. Man, I love to go hands-on. Anymore? Sure. Nope. Sure. Until, until I was involved in that uh, head-on car collision and, and broke my back, uh, you know, I, I was in the thick of a lot of things, always always but when that happened and after that it happened uh, i looked at life a little more a little more uh, soundly and uh, yeah i was a little more gingerly with with uh my involvement and uh you learn to be a little more um diplomatic with with the words and i mean you can do a lot with talking to people and de-escalating situations with people that's what it's all about is the escalate you respect people out there you respect people you treat people well and and that's one of the things that i hope a lot of the younger guys learn from me when i was on there and that's one of the things that i've always pushed people i mean grizz uh you know on my group site i don't want people using foul language and profanities and obscenities i don't like that's right i do not like and that's the same way I was when I was working the streets. Do not, do not talk like this to people. Do not talk like that to anybody, please. And they do. And that's what's sad. Now, I'm going to show you this video, Val, because this actually happened on when I was on county. But the, uh, the driver and passenger uh, got shot. And uh, this is... This is how they're training officers today. And I I'm, I can't believe I'm going to show up. I'm going to show it because this is going to resonate with some people. And this is why I feel sorry for people today on the PD. Blow it up. I don't know if it hit audio. Can you hear Stop audio? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay. You got Stop. it. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Stop the Stop it! Stop the car! That Stop car, car is in motion! Now watch this! Put on the... Put on the bridge! Stop! Stop! Oh. 
car, man! Stop the car, man! No, it's not going to show the, the second video, the car that was pursuing. Let me uh, see if I can. Uh... I, I still get uneasy when I see stuff like that. But I, you know what? When when I'm chilling at the end of the night, I'm either watching sport, reading sports, or I'm, I'm reviewing these types of videos and stuff. But I still, you know, I, I still get uneasy when I when I see these videos and stuff because... I guess for people like you and I and others before us, in our, in our time, we thrived on the adrenaline, we thrived on the camaraderie, we thrived on the the danger aspects of that that kind of stuff. But when you're when you're ten years, twelve years um, beyond that. It's still anybody that's that's done that kind of stuff knows that it still uh, sends shivers up your spine when you see that kind of stuff. Really, it's incredible. I had a hard time sitting <laughs> sitting straight in this seat here in this chair here watching that because oh no no you haven't seen nothing yet. Let me bring up YouTube and let me show you the actual video. That's that's the that is the media version that they want you to see because. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what they are training law enforcement officers. And this is what gets me upset, you know, uh, because they do not want. Here we go. This is a better view. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the. OK, this is the video we want to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is what upset me the most. I know we're all kind of off subject a little bit, but this is when I want people to understand what's going on to society besides Bigfoot. and. Uh, everything else. Ah, uh, is it a? It's a window. Yeah, hold on. There we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Action. You don't jump on the car like that. You don't get in front of that car. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you one thing. That fire mine would have been out of bullets before that car would have drove off. But you see what people are being taught today? Why in the hell are you going to jump on somebody's car? This is what's going on in America, besides the Bigfoot. But anyways, you know, I get very you know. sentimental when when I get when I see videos like this at night, because I own many police groups on Facebook, mm -hmm. many. 
So, yes, I think he got five years only. He wouldn't have served any. You see what you see what this says right here? That says retired. Oh yeah, man. I got mine right here too. Yep. That's it. And I, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, Look, mine's got rank oh, on yeah. it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got it, baby. And then I got my little ID. You got it. You know, so, yeah. where I come from, they call that they call that uh flashing. Flashing tin and carry yeah. your gat and tin. Your but, gun and tin. But you know, we, we had a mass shooting here a few weeks ago here in downtown Louisville in, in a national bank. And the way the mirrors were set up, the way the bank was made. That was recent. The too, yeah, the officers had to crawl, and the guy just got out of academy and got shot in the head with the five five six and they are around. He's still in intensive care or whatnot, you know, and it's the mindset of going to a scene on an active shooter. Yes, there are dangers always, right? Mm -hmm. But there are certain ways to approach things. Uh now, if you would have saw the video going down. Thank you, Crazy Witch. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, but, you know, it's the way they teach these young officers things. You know, when I was younger, there were uh, height regulations. If you were below this height, you were not hired. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not being discriminatory. It's because officer safety you know, there's been guys that were four times bigger than I. If I didn't have the proper training, they would not be able to kiss the pavement. And we had tasers. You know, mace, OC, you can throw that crap out. If they're whacked up or cranked up, they ain't going to work. That just makes them worse. So, but anyways, back to Bigfoot, ladies and gentlemen. I, mean, I just cannot imagine one mad, a Sasquatch mad. Because, you know, I've, I've been out in the woods with people. I'm like, what are you carrying? I'm carrying a nine. I'm like, well, you dog might as well just carry a BB gun. Well, you know, bro, I, for a long time, and I still do, I carry my, I carry the weapon that was, was given me when I retired. And that's the weapon that I carried. Now, a lot of the guys, the agency I worked with, they went to 45 semi-automatics which is a bigger gun now that's what we use in the military when i was in the military you know i i did two terms two two tent stents in the military i started at uh, infantry as a young kid i was in audie murphy's unit and uh, i slept in the same barracks that the old german nazi ss barracks that uh, uh what was the name of that what was the name of that popcorn man? And I love popcorn. <laughs> oh, Edenbacher? Edenbacher. The, you know, the Red Baron. That right. uh, when they when they drove those those uh, biplanes, well, their barracks over in Germany, that's that's where I was housed when I was in the infantry. And that was Audie Murphy's unit that I was in. And um, so we carried, we carried 45s. Now as a military... And the second stint as a military police investigator, yeah, that's all we carried was 45s. And 45s were exceptional weapons. They were heavier than what I carried uh, here in the streets uh, outside of Detroit, which was a 40 caliber. But um, both are accurate weapons. But the, di the difference between the two is that, and I've seen somebody shot in the leg with a 45 and we had to take him up to the hospital in Würzburg, Germany. The entry wound was the size of a cigarette butt, the filter of a cigarette butt, but the exit wound on the backside of his thigh was the size, I don't know, maybe an orange or something. Uh -huh. And, and it decimated his bone in his thigh. We had to, we had to, carry his there had to be two or three people to carry him to to hold up the flesh on his thigh because it was just sagging there was no bone there it was crushed it was completely gone 
but that's the difference between a 40 caliber and a 45 caliber, just devastating. And that's what they're, you know, that's where a lot of, yeah, hollow points. And that's what we carried in our 40 calibers also were the stingers. We had the stingers, the hollow points with the stingers in them. But, um, well, yeah. we went to the uh, nine mils. We went from the 40s to nine mils because the mm -hmm. state police did. Yeah. And uh, they... I don't have my old duty gun. My old duty gun's behind my uh, screen. But we had special bullets that were made for the FBI that we used that had gelatin in the tips and the hollow points. Really? Gelatin? So, yeah. Why gelatin? Why gelatin? I don't. I don't understand. I don't know if it's for feeding uh, reliability issues. I have no idea. But it was. Uh, you could buy it now. But when it first came out, it was for law enforcement only. You, know, mm -hmm. you couldn't walk up to a store and buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, next time uh, on, before we go live on the show, I'll show you what a round looks like. Well, so. when I was in the uh, state police academy and training, uh, they. They gave us two weapons. They gave us what they called a pocket gun and our service weapon. The pocket gun stayed in your pocket. That's what was in your pocket when you approach a car in the event that you needed to fire through the car door, you know, for quick exigency. You know, you've got to get away from the car quickly. Um, but that's, ex that's what the reason for that uh, pocket gun was. It was a two inch uh, small palm size weapon and stuff but I, I don't think i don't think they do that anymore if they do you don't know about it but um i don't know yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's something you know it, like i said I, I really feel for the people that actually are going through the process it, it's not like it was you know uh when i was on and it's definitely has changed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the public has changed. Now, the state I, I, I worked in, I loved it. You mm -hmm. told me that you're uh, an unsolvered citizen and, and you were only traveling and I told you to get out of the car and you didn't. I knocked your glass out and I drug your butt out of the, win out of the window. And if you wreck my uniform, you got extra charges plus the resistant arrest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and on county or... Our policy was we asked you once, you didn't re you didn't reply or you didn't comply. We asked you the second time at that, we popped you with the taser because too many officers were getting hurt. You know, and they and then they we went away from the from the continuum force, the ladder of continuum force. You know, you did this, well, I can do this and this to, to subdue you. Mm -hmm. Well, officers were officers were getting hurt. So they changed our policy and we're like, screw that. We're tired of people getting hurt. Yeah, that deadly force continuum is is like a pyramid. That uh, one one action, there's always a response, and that response by the law enforcement office officer is always a little more deadlier. But except for you know, without shooting somebody, there's always something else that you have. You have pepper spray. You have a uh, uh, you have the uh, the little uh, baton, baton your ass. You have, yeah, you have you have all these other instruments to use, and you better use them before you resort to deadly deadly force. But I can tell you, my partner, my partner uh, uh, killed somebody, shot somebody, and um, I seen the misery that he went through. And it changes you for life. It changes you, right or wrong. It changes you, and I I wouldn't wish that on anybody, nobody. Um, when you look into my big dark eyes, uh, I I see some stuff, and and um, I spent a lot of my time working uh, undercover. That's what I did. I did it. I did it. Uh, I did it uh, federally. I did it for state. And um, there was one time when when things got pretty pretty bad. A couple times when things got pretty bad, and and um, 
you know, if it weren't for intuition, um, I might not be here today, but I, I felt that uh, uh, these people were going to execute me and they had the duck, they had the, you talked about gorilla tape, they had the duct tape there, they had the weapon there. Um, the guy comes out, I, I, I was in his house, in his apartment. He, he gave me a beer. I was sitting there nursing a beer like a baby uh, sucking on a bottle, not really drinking it. I'm there for show. And um, uh, he comes out with, and he just got done cooking me a, a spam sandwich. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just like him. I'm just, I look like a gangster. And I'm there, I'm there for business. And I know what he is. I know that he had a history of shooting police officers before. I knew this going in there. And um, when I was watching him, I, I noticed that he pulled something out of his cupboard above his uh, stove. And I heard the, I heard the slide click back on, a, on the weapon. And he walks around the, the counter and he had this, this, this weapon in his hand and he had that absent look in his eyes. I'm, I'm telling you, it was the, the look of insanity in his eyes, a blank look. And I was watching, I was watching his hand. I was watching his eyes. <clears throat> I had a transmitter on and, um, even though he gave me a hug before I went into his place, I knew what he was doing. He was patting me down, yep. fishing for something. And I kept watching the closet door off to the side of the door because I just felt like there was eyes watching me when I walked into this place. And that, that place was the point of a shooting before, before I got there. It had a history of this kind of stuff, drive-bys and all this kind of stuff. In any event, um, he walks up to me with this look on his face and uh, he asked me, he says, uh, do you know what this is? And I, you know, I says, yeah, I know what that, what the blankety blank that is. What are you, what are you asking me that for? He says, do you know what this will do to somebody? And not, not blinking an eye, I look him dead straight in the eye and I said, yeah, I know what that'll do to somebody. He takes it, he racks back the slide. I see the round eject onto the carpet. He slams the, the slide forward, it clicks, it's, it, it, it clicks. He pulls the trigger and it, it clicks, it's empty. He's telling me, he hands it to me and he, and he put it up to my face, up to my mouth. While we're looking at each other in the eyes and he says, here, hold this, hold this, feel this, touch this know what it does to somebody. And you know, <clears throat> to my mind, I, I don't remember touching that weapon because in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking about, you know, if, if, I have to, if I have to get this man here, I'm not gonna have my fingerprints on that gun there. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just went to his bedroom because he's, he, had a, uh, he had a large uh, bundle of something that he wanted to, to sell me. So he invited me to his bedroom down the hallway and I'm already feeling uneasy about that closet with the louver doors on it. Cause I feel somebody looking at me like, like, a, like this is a rip. I had thousands of thousands of dollars on me, marked money, Mark state police money on me. It's all marked. He doesn't know this. My surveillance, when I'm out on an operation, there's, there's eight to 10 people that follow me. That's my protection. They go to the scene, they go to the location, and they sweep it and make sure that it's safe for me to arrive. When I arrive in my raggedy ass car with a loud stereo, making a lot of noise, it's safe. And that's their counter surveillance. They're there until I leave that place. And, and if I don't come out of that place, they're coming in. And if I don't, if I don't respond, if I get cut off, if the transmission gets cut off, 
I get a message uh, from the cell phone or something that, you know, with a code that tells me if I'm alive, get on the floor and cover my head because they're coming in. That door's coming down and it's not going to be pretty. So I go into the bedroom and they can hear me. They got good co combination. They're moving closer to the, uh, to the entry door to this apartment complex. They can hear me in there. And I know I'm on the second floor because I know where I'm at because I'm reading off the door numbers as I'm walking up the steps because I'm telling this man, that's my lottery number. That's my luxury number. Is this, is this your door here? 267? I'm going to play that lottery number, man. I'm going to hit it. Come on in and have a beer. Sit down and have a beer. They know where I'm at. I sit down on that lazy boy chair and I see that louver doors and I get that feeling. God's given me that gift, that intuition, that intuitive gift. I feel these eyes on me. They know I got thousands of dollars. These are the people that tell me, uh, you come into my organization and you can have all this area, Southeast Michigan, and we'll enforce it. We'll kill anybody that works in this area, but you're controlling us. We're we'll do the muscle for you. This is pretty deep stuff, Grizz. So, so he invites me into the bedroom where he's got this stuff. And I notice on the bed, this is all beautiful rented furniture. He's got three, four, five pagers. He's got cell phones lined up. They're all ringing and buzzing. I'm supposed to meet his, his player. I'm supposed to meet his, his supplier. This is the name of, this is the nature of the game. I don't care about him. I care about the next person. And <clears throat> when I go in there, I see the, I see the 45 caliber laying on his bed. I see a roll of deck tape. In my mind, I'm thinking, you know, with that feeling that I got about that closet door by the door, this is a rip and I'm not dying like this, not today. So I'm thinking in my, in my mind, I'm already thinking, how am I getting out of this? Well, you know, I got six shots here, six shots, point blank. He's going to go before I do right now. I'm taking that nightstand. It's going out the window and I'm going to follow it down and I should be able to break my fall on a, on a parked car down there. That's the way I'm getting out of this place. It didn't go down like that, but instead when I seen that weapon, I started asking him, I says, Hey, that's a nice, nice weapon. What is that? A 45? How much do you want for that? I'll give you a 200 for it right now. No questions to ask cash money, sell it to me. We ended up back in the living room. I sat back down in my chair, drinking that, that beer that he gave me, that long neck beer. And that's when, that's when he came over the, came around the counter with that, with that weapon in his hand and put it up to my mouth. And after all that theatrics, he asked me to touch this weapon, hold it. And, and I'm still not out of the, I'm not out of the, the danger yet. I'm not putting my hands on this weapon. Cause I, if I nail you right here, I'm not having my fingerprints on your weapon. It's not going like that. It's gonna go the way I want it to go. And so as it ends up, um, we, I talked my way back downstairs. We're outside the building. My decision was to leave because his people didn't show up. Um, and when we get out the front door, there's a, there's a suspicious vehicle parked in front of his door that he never seen before in his life. He knows all these vehicles in this parking lot, everybody. If something strange comes along that he's never seen before, now he's suspicious. And he started he got suspicious. So he goes back inside and barricades himself in. My group gets me out of there. They take me back to our uh, office. And this is the world that you live in. This is the world that you play your games in. This is surveillance and counter surveillance. And um, it's just amazing that somehow we get into Bigfoots and stuff. Now, I told you in the beginning, you've heard this before from me, that uh, while I was doing what I did, 
I also had a license as a private investigator. And um, all the stuff that I've seen and, and been through in my career, um, I still had an empty void in, in my heart. I wanted to know that, that when I left law enforcement, that, that I could find some sense of self-redemption. I needed to do, I needed to know that whatever I'd done, I've, I've made some good in life and people and the world, and that it was my decision to go look for this, this uh, missing young man from Ohio. And that's, that's what I did. I, I volunteered to look for this missing young man out of Ohio, clearly out of my jurisdiction. But uh, I was able to locate this man. He was a homicide victim. And to this day, uh, in spite of the fact that he was missing for 30, 31 years, uh, his mother, who, who, had, who has just passed three years ago, was able to see and know that her, her son was back with him in Ohio before she passed. And that's the way I chose to retire. To me, that was, that was like a curtain call to me. That was, my, that was my chance to stand there and bow, take a bow and say, you know, uh, I wasn't fired. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, um, I wasn't blemished. Um, you know, I left in good standing, in good stead, and that's all you can do when you do this kind of stuff. And um, when I had all this, this, this uh, idle time on my hand, I went back and contacted Pallades and um, started talking about uh, Bigfoots and stuff like that. And then I got a hold of this individual in Michigan, and I said, will you take me out with you? But, I, you know, what is this Bigfoot you're talking about? Two years to the day that I retired, that's when I had my sighting and encounter. So as a retired law enforcement, here I am today talking about this with you, my good friend. Grim. That's right, brother. And that's how I got into this stuff. But I'd it's like amazing. See, I'd like to see more people like us in this stuff because there's a, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to know about this kind of stuff, Chris. There is. There's a whole lot to learn. And that's the thing is that who is an expert? Nobody is. No. And there is so much to learn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I am a scaredy one anymore to the woods. So, yes, I'm one of those guys that carries too much gun power. I will not be able to run or too much ammo. So, yes. So what do you think? How, 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 how do you think we did today? You think we did OK? I think we did very good. I, I think we did great. I think and yes, Norma, I do agree. You do got hotheads on the PD. You do. I, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry that that happens, but yes, you do. So, Twisted Witch, thank you. You've seen countless Bigfoots and other cryptic creatures. We got to have her on the show one day. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. Yes. So, yeah, of, Thomas, well, we're going to hook you up with a research partner if I got to drive from where I am, buddy. Is it Thomas from uh, Michigan? Indiana. Indiana? He, yeah, he's not too far from you. No, no, he's not. No. So, not too far. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, support uh, the group and Grizzly. And also, the audio will be uploaded first thing in the morning. All 15 channels on Apple, Google, whatever you name it, we are there. So from me hey, to Chris, you. Let me, and... let me let me ask the people who yeah. listen too. If they if they come across any Michigan Bigfoot uh, sightings or encounters, give me a holler. Send us a uh, send us an email or something. That's how that's how we keep it going and, and keep it real for everybody. And uh, we all learn by this. But let's uh, let's. Uh, Let's keep it going. Yeah, that would be really awesome because that's really important. And because you don't filter out yours, you you actually do yours as it comes in, right? Yes, I do. Yep. It's 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 a lot of work, but that's what I do. So, yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. It, you know what, Grez, uh, before you go, I would just want to wish you a very, very happy, happy, safe uh, Memorial Day, my brother. You too. And uh, everyone out there listening tonight, tomorrow, and across the world, 
We're here for you guys. Do we want to hear about your stories? Email us at rolling the bone show at gmail.com. It's rolling the bones at show at gmail.com. Rolling the bone show at gmail.com. And make sure I say that right. So, yeah, we want to hear about your stories and encounters. But until next time, we say, Val. Bye bye. Take care, everybody. We love you. Rock it. Yeah. Val loves this song. I do too. Good music, man. Love it. Yeah. You're taking music. <laughs> oh, you are too, man. I know what I do without you. That's for sure. Very cool. It is, man. It really is. I really enjoyed everybody. But really, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, if you got an encounter or something like that, you know, make sure and reach out to us and send it to Val or whatever, and we'll catch you on the next flip slide. So take care, guys. See ya. Later. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. Should we run? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> No, I'm out of here. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, I'm out of here. Huh. Maybe it is a chipmunk. It's a grizzly. Oh, f it. Are we going to die? I don't know. We're just going to sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs> <laughs>